Hi, welcome to another video. Got my coffee, got Lightroom, let's get started. Hi, welcome to another video. I'm gonna get straight into it today. I'm not gonna waffle on because you've obviously clicked on this video for a reason. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can use the easiest masking tool on Lightroom, that is radial gradients, to get a really effective edit. Now, when it comes to masking on Lightroom, it can seem a bit intimidating on, at first. You know, you've got the easy ones like select subject, select sky, you let Lightroom do that for you. And then you get into the more complicated ones like brush, linear gradient, radial gradient. Then you get into the color range and luminance range and they, they can just scare you forever from editing at all. But like with everything, I think it's really important to start with the basics. Um, if you start with the easiest one, then it gets so much easier to build and build and build from there. And the easiest one, in my opinion, and the most useful as well, let's be honest, is the radial gradient. So I'm going to show you quickly how I'm going to edit this photo and turn it into this photo just using radial gradients. So first, we'll, we'll just slap on a preset because uh, you don't want to watch me editing forever. I'll probably just pick one of my own. Uh, let's go with one of these. Let's go with essentials just to get started. Okay. So as you can see, it's a bit overexposed. The greens are really vibrant with that. So we're going to just do a few local adjustments just to get it right. Uh, so highlights are right down. Let's adjust the greens ever so slightly. Reduce the luminance and saturation a bit. Same with the yellows in the grass. There we go. A little less vibrant, a little less washed out. Now, as you can see, it still looks overexposed. There's hardly any contrast. And there's a couple of compositional problems here. So let's change that with a bit of a crop. I'm going to bring that right up. We still want to keep... What I want is this rose to stay coming right from the corner. I like it when you do that, when you get a leading line that comes directly from the corner of a picture. So that looks good to me. And then we've got this little distraction down here, that house on the edge of the frame. So we're just gonna do a very quick job. If this was a proper edit, I would use another program to get it right, but let's pick there. There we are, disappeared, gone forever. So now we've got the basic file that we want to work with. This is where masking comes in now. So, a little thing with masking. If you drop your zoom down to about 6%, you can easily build a mask on the edge. And I'll show you why that's important now, especially with like the sky. So if we draw this radial gradient out here above the sky, you see here that affects just the sky. It affects outside the frame, so it doesn't affect that part of the picture, obviously, because there's no picture there. But if we just affect this bit, let's bring down that exposure a bit, put it back to fit the screen so we can see what we're working with. And maybe dehaze it a little bit. There we go. And reduce saturation because it's gone, it's gone quite purple. There we go. There you are, so you've already brought back loads of detail in the sky in a really natural looking way, just by using one radial gradient. Now, one thing that radial gradients are really useful for is for guiding someone's eye through a picture. So let me show you exactly what I mean. Can you see here, we've got a leading line. It goes all the way through the picture, like zigzags through this valley. Now, th these clumps of trees could, could be quite distracting for a viewer. So what we can do now is, if we add a couple more radial gradients on the bits where we don't want a viewer to be distracted, now, a little tip here, if you want to make the same adjustment in two different areas, if you right click on a radial gradient you've made and duplicate radial gradient one, gives you another one exactly the same. Now, if we uh, sort this out, get it in the right place. Can you see both of those areas will be affected by any edits that we make on the sliders now. That's really useful because you get a balanced edit on each side without even like, having to compare or make two radial gradients. So let's reduce the exposure a bit, just darken those bits. 
Not so much that you can't see the detail. Uh, and let's just slightly reduce the saturation. There we go. Now, as you can probably see, that's quite an intense edit. This one needs to be a little bit bigger. So what we can do now is we can just play with the feathers, uh, how much it's feathered in. So if you did that look, it looks really ugly. Whereas if we do that, we can adjust just how intense it is. And there we go, the same with this one. Lovely. So now that's darkened those two bits. And this is a really distracting area down at the bottom here. So we're gonna do the same, but with a different gradient because it'll probably be a little bit darker with it being a, such a bigger area of the picture. Sorry, I'm concentrating rather than talking to you. <laughs> Let's bring that down a little bit. There we go. See, so it looks like it's just in a shaded area now. It looks like it's a bit of cloud cover, much less distracting to the viewer's eye. So you can see, you've still got this leading line all the way through. We've got a little bit of lightness up here that could do with being brought down a little bit as well. So just one more radial gradient up there. There we go. And there you have it. You've got a leading line through the picture, easy as that. Now, Another good thing that radio gradients are good for is for attracting a viewer's eye to a certain location. And I'll show you how you can do that as well. With another radio gradient, I want the viewer to look at this road coming through here, especially this house. And there's a little car. Let me uh, zoom in down there. There's a little car just on this corner that I want the viewer to be able to see and to really concentrate on uh, when they look close up to the picture. So. If I had a radial gradient along here and just turn it so it follows the road, the part of the picture that we want the viewer to really concentrate on. Get that right, perfect. Yeah. Now, we can raise the sharpness in this bit. I normally like to do it around about 50 so it looks natural and maybe a little bit more. Uh, but that really sharpens up that bit of the image. It makes it the focus of the image. Um, and I'm gonna just raise the texture and clarity by a little bit, just by 10 each. So they look really sharp and you can really see the detail in that part of the picture. Uh, the viewer's eye will be really drawn to that then. So we've already got a much more dynamic looking picture. Let's see what it looked like before and after. See, flat, boring, viewer doesn't know really where to look. And now with those, just those radial gradients, we've got a lead in line uh, and you can see detail in the sky. We just wanna make a couple more adjustments uh, because you wanna sort of adjust things as you go. As you develop the picture, you'll go back to things that you've already edited. So like, for example, these colors are looking a bit washed out now. So you can see there's quite a bit of blue in the sky uh, or in the uh, background. So what we can do about that is bring down the luminance a little bit and that'll really bring out the detail in the background. If we bring it down the saturation as well, that stuff are looking quite so blue. There we go. Now, this area is looking washed out. We've already adjusted the greens. The greens here look good, but this area, because it was so bright on that particular spot, looks a bit washed out. So we'll use another radio grade to fix that. It is just the best tool in Lightroom. There we go. If we increase the saturation in that area just a bit, there we go. Maybe bring down the highlights. There we are, a lot less washed out. It also draws the viewer's eye into that uh, leading line a bit more. And there you are, you could finish there. It'd be a good photo. Uh, it's a natural looking photo. It just looks like there's cloud cover on the scene. But I'm gonna add one more thing to add another element for the viewer. So if we go back to that trick earlier about reducing the picture size for adding a radial gradient, this is quite a common trick. This is that you'll see used in a lot of photos, especially on social media. If you look at where the direction of the sun is and add a radial gradient there, I like to do one that kind of shines from the corner so it's sort of oblong, not just a perfect circle. We feather it right down and then bring it closer, there we go. Now, zoom back in so we can see what we're working with. If you increase the temperature slightly 
and reduce the dehaze a bit. Always keep your eye on the uh, histogram so that you're not blowing out those highlights in this bit. And then we're going to colorize it. Try and find a nice rich yellow color. There we go. There we are. Now it makes it look like the sun's shining through the clouds on that part. And there you have it, an edited photo really quickly, just using radio gradients. Now with the sky, I could have just used select sky, but I wanted to stick to my thing of just using radio gradients. Uh, and with that simple, easy masking tool, you can create a really nice dynamic picture. Don't be afraid to just use that to begin with. If you are a bit worried about using masks on Lightroom, then this is a great way of getting yourself started. A lot like using stabilizers on a bike, if you use this to begin with, you'll learn how to use masking and then you can progress to the other tools. It's really simple, really easy, and it can really change your picture. So get out and use those radio gradients. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That'd be really helpful to help other people find it as well. And if this is your sort of thing, please let me know down in the comments. Um, I've done a couple of tutorials with Lightroom. Most of my videos are out in the field. I love being out in the field, uh, but occasionally I like to share how I edit my pictures as well. So if you have enjoyed it, please let me know down in the comments. If you're not subscribed already, uh, then please consider that too. Um, and if you want to watch another one of my videos, then watch this video here. And I'll see you next time.